The Senate will come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Senators Baisley, Bridges. Excuse. Buckner. Senator Buckner. Coleman. Cutter. Senator Cutter. Excused. Danielson. Senator Danielson. Senator Danielson, thank you. Exum, Fields. Senator Fields. Excused. Gardner. <coughs> Senator Gardner. Excused. Janal. Gonzalez. Senator Gonzalez. Senator Gonzalez. Hansen. Henriksen. Huck is Lewis. Kirkmeyer. Kolker. Liston. Lundin. Senator Lundin. Marchman. Senator Marchman. Excused. Michelson Janay. Malika. Senator Malika. Excused. Pelton B. Pelton R. Priola. Excused. Rich. Roberts. Rodriguez. Simpson. Smallwood. Sullivan. Van Winkle. Will. Winter. Zenzinger. Senator Gardner. Senator Fields. Senator Fields. Senator Marchman. Senator Marchman. Senator Malika. Absent. Senator Cutter. Mr. President. Here. The morning roll call is 32 present, zero absent, three excused. We do have a quorum. Senator Exum, would you please lead us in the pledge? Will you please stand and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Approval of the journal. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate Journal of March 26, 2024 be approved as corrected by the Secretary. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no? The ayes have it and the motion is adopted. Senate Services. March 27, 2024, Craig Lane Gross, Senate Bills 176, 177, 178, Craig Lane Gross, Senate Bill 172, Craig Lane Revised House Bills 1097, 1257, and 1277, Craig Lane Revised House Bills 1058, 1072, 1098, 1100, 1102, 1104, 1241, and 1267, Craig Lane World Senate Bill 17, 21, 56, 71, 87, 99, 148, and 155. Will the clerk please... mark the record that Senator Mollica was 15 minutes late. 15 minutes late, and if he keeps arguing, it will soon be 16 minutes late, and mark him as present. <coughs> Committee reports. March 26, 2024. Committee on Local Government and Housing, after consideration on the merits of committee records following House Bill 1259, be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation. Message from the House. March 26, 2024, the House has voted to concur in the Senate amendments to House Bill 1033 and House Bill 1088 and has repassed the bills as so amended. Introduction of bills. House Bill 1005 by Representatives Degree, Kennedy, and Ortiz, and Senators Roberts and Fields concerning contract requirements between primary care providers and other health care organizations. Health and Human Services. House Bill 1254 by Representatives Hamrick and Bradley and Senators Smallwood and Roberts concerning the continuation of the regulation of non-transplant tissue banks and in connection therewith, implementing recommendations contained in the 2023 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies. Health and Human Services. Committee reports. March 26, 2024, Committee on Business, Labor, and Technology, after consideration on the merits of committee records of following, Senate Bill 173 be amended as follows and is so amended, be referred to the Committee on Finance with favorable recommendation. House Bill 1011 be amended as follows and is so amended, be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation and with a recommendation to be placed on the consent calendar. And Senate Bill 169 be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation and with a recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we proceed out of order for a moment of personal privilege. The motion is for the Senate to proceed out of order for a moment of personal privilege. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the Senate will now proceed out of order. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. Today's a very special day. You all know that three of the current state senators are from Cheyenne Wells. We have the Class 1A state championship basketball team. And there may be a senator, future senator or two over there. So uh, the coach is a Pelton. And the, my oldest grandson is on the team. Uh, so with that, I've, I've got a tribute here I'd like to read. It says, the Senate of the Colorado Legislature convened in the second regular session of the 74th General Assembly, hereby extends our warmest congratulations and commendation to Shine Wells Tigers boys basketball. In their final game of a spectacular 23-4 season, the Shine Wells Tigers beat the first seed, McClave, with a hard-fought win of 55-36. This win gave the Tigers their first state title since 1955, 69 years. This final game also settled the score between Shine Wells and McClave as the two previous matchups between the teams went into overtime, resulting in a 1-1 record. Congratulations to Coach Pelton and the rest of the team for their excellent performance, hard work, and dedication for a winning season while displaying good sportsmanship. On request of Senator Rod Pelton, given this 27th day of March 2024, State Capitol, Denver, Colorado, signed by the Senate President Steve Finberg. So I mentioned in the tribute 1955. That's 69 years ago. And for you, some of you that are kind of younger than that, to give you a point of reference, that was the year that the great senator from Newcastle was born. And you can see how old he is. So it's been a long time. 
We also, since I had this tribute written, uh, we have found out that Coach Pelton is the coach of the year, and uh, Carson Noe is the player of the year. So uh, you guys fought hard. You guys were fun to watch all season. This is a great bunch of boys over here. And also, I want to call out my oldest grandson is on the team, Jesse Harlow. So, uh. so you want to talk? Okay. The other Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Thank you. I just want to say, from somebody who grew up in Cheyenne Wells, uh, got to be one of those kids that dreamed of going to state and bringing home a state championship because there was one piece of carpet on the wall that said 1955, and you're like, I want to be that, to that, that next one to be up there. This is an amazing accomplishment for you boys, and I really want to say congratulations. And uh, you, you uh, fulfilled all of our dreams because we got to live vicariously through you because we were never that good. So I appreciate this, and uh, congratulations to you. So thank you. Senator Will. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Thank you. I, I want to I give a shout out to that team. I'm so proud of them. You know, I grew up in Cheyenne Wells uh, way before any of you sitting over there could even remember. but. Uh, I was a little brat running around Cheyenne Wells years ago, and then, as Mr. Pelton said, the last time, uh, Senator Pelton said, uh, the last time that Cheyenne Wells was the uh, state champion was 1955. That was the year I was born. But I have to tell you that uh, when I was playing basketball, most of my game was above the rim, so uh, I think you understand <laughs> that. Congratulations, Cheyenne Wells Tigers. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, may I have another moment of personal privilege? Granted. Thank you. Uh, I guess I would ask that uh, the team and the coach and one of the bus drivers stand up to be recognized formally. And Mr. President, if you so desire, I would appreciate a uh, brief recess to, to greet the boys. Certainly. Congratulations to the team and the coaches and the entire community of Cheyenne Wells. We're glad to have you here, and the Senate will stand in a brief recess to greet all of our guests.
The Senate will come back to order. Third reading of bills. Consent calendar. Will the clerk please read all of the bills on the consent calendar? House Bill 1277 by Representatives Darty and Haltorf and Senator Gonzalez concerning the continuation of the Youth Restraint and Seclusion Working Group and in connection therewith implementing the recommendation in the 2023 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies. House Bill 1257 by Representatives Catlin and McLaughlin and Senator Will concerning the continuation of the Colorado Natural Areas Council and in connection therewith implementing the recommendation in the 2023 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies. House Bill 1097 by Representatives Taggart and Weissman and Senators Fields and Gardner concerning occupational credentialing for military families. Senate Bill 177 by Senators Mullica and Simpson, Representatives Catlin and Story, concerning the authority of History of Colorado to dispose of its North Storage Facility. Senate Bill 178 by Senators Hendrickson and Simpson and Representatives Story and Lindsay concerning the repeal of a duplicative requirement to maintain an inventory of non-developed state-owned real property. Senate Bill 176 by Senators Janal and Hendrickson and Representatives Epson and McLaughlin concerning updating the terminology that refers to an individual who is enrolled in the state medical assistance program. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the passage of all the bills on the third reading of bills, final passage consent calendar, which includes House Bill 1277, House Bill 1257, House Bill 1097, Senate Bill 177, Senate Bill 178, and Senate Bill 176. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of all of the bills in the third reading of bills consent calendar. Are there any no votes? Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277. Senator Pelton R. will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to be a recorded no vote on House Bill 1277. Senator Pelton B. will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277 and 1257. Senator Van Winkle will be recorded as a no vote on House Bills 1277 and 1257. Senator Baisley. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277 and House Bill 1257. Senator Baisley will be recorded as a no vote on House Bills 1277 and 1257. Mr. Minority Leader. Good morning, Mr. President. I wish to be recorded as a no vote on 1277, and so I request that you record me as a no vote on House Bill 1277. The minority leader wishes to be a no vote on House Bill 1277 and therefore requested to be a no vote on House Bill 1277 and therefore will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277. Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. I have several requests. Uh, one is I do not wish to be a no vote on House Bill 1277. I would, however, like to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1257. Senator Smallwood will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1257. Senator Liston. Thank you, Mr. President. I will uh, do the opposite. Um, I wish to be recorded as a yes vote on 1257 and a no vote on 1277. Senator Liston will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1277. With a vote of... Twenty-seven ayes, six noes, zero absent, two excused. House Bill 1277 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Priola, Marchman. With a vote of 30 ayes, three noes, zero absent, two excused. House Bill 1257 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Priola. With please add, will the clerk please add Senator Priola to the roll and remove his co sponsorships of the previous two bills?
there will now be two votes from this general assembly, two uh, bills from this general assembly that Senator Priola has not co-sponsored. <laughs> Don't take it personally, Senators Gonzalez and Will. Uh, with a vote of 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent to excuse, House Bill 1097 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Van Winkle, Will, Pelton B. Priola. Buckner. Michelson Janae. Cutter. Henriksen. Marchman. Zenzinger. Janal. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Kolker. Smallwood. Minority Leader Lundin, Exum, Mullica, Liston, Pelton R, Baisley, Simpson, Winter, Coleman, <laughs> Sullivan. With a vote of 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent to excuse, Senate Bill 177 is passed. <laughs> Co-sponsors, Senators Priola. Senator Priola, you don't need to raise your hand because you're not on the roll. <laughs> With a vote of 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent to excuse, Senate Bill 178 is passed. Co-sponsors. Co Senator Zenzinger. Will the sergeants please remove this random person on the floor? <laughs> With Zenzinger. With a vote of 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent, two excuse, Senate Bill 176 is passed. Co sponsors Senators Michelson, Janae, Cutter, Winter, Buckner. Smallwood. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the general order second readings of bills, second reading of bills calendar layover until Thursday, April the 4th. The motion is to lay over the general order second reading of bills calendar to April 4th. 4th. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. General order, second reading of bills, calendar will over until April 4th. You got a motion to special orders. Majority Leader Rodriguez. And prior to that, please add Senator Priola to the roll. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate take up Senate Bill, House Bill 1225 on special orders at the hour of 940, 9.40. 941. The motion is that the Senate take up House Bill 1225 on special orders consent. 
At the hour of 9.40 a.m., this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? The ayes have it. That motion is adopted. The Senate will now take up House Bill 1225 on special orders consent at the hour of 9.40 a.m. Special orders, second reading of bills, consent calendar, Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for consideration of special orders consent calendar. Second reading. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? The motion is adopted. The Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the special orders, second reading of bills, consent calendar, and Senator Colker will take the chair. There we go. Committee will come to order. The Colt rule is relaxed. Will the clerk please read the title to the bill on special orders, uh, second reading consent calendar. House Bill 1225 by Representatives Duran and Lynch and Senators Fields and Gardner concerning procedures in murder in the first degree cases and in connection therewith an exception to the right to bail for cases of murder in the first degree when proof is evident or presumption is great. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move for the passage of the bill on special order second reading of bill's consent calendar, which includes House Bill 1225. Is there any discussion on uh, the special order uh, bill 1225? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the, uh, the bill is adopted. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. The motion is for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. Committee will rise and report. Senate will come to order. Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has had a number of bills under consideration. Uh, will the clerk please read the report? One bill under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? March 27, 2024. Mr. President, your committee of the whole executive report has had under consideration the following touch bill, being the second reading thereof, and makes the following recommendation thereon. House Bill 1225 passed on second reading and ordered revised in place on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole Report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excuse, the report is adopted. House Bill 1225 passed in second reading in order revised and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for, the for us to take up on the hour of 9.44, uh, House, House Concurrent Resolution 1002 and House Bill 1248. The motion is that the Senate take up HCR 1002 and House Bill 1248 on special orders at the hour of 9.44 a.m. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the motion is adopted. The Senate will take up House Concurrent Resolution 1002 and House Bill 1248 on special orders at the hour of 9.44 a.m. Special order, second reading of bill, Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into Committee of the Whole for consideration of special orders, second reading of bills. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the special order, second reading of bills, and Senator Colker will take the chair. The committee will come to order. The coat rule is relaxed. Will the clerk please read the titles of the bill and uh, resolution on general orders, second reading of bills.
HCR 1002 by Representatives Duran and Lynch and Senators Fields and Gardner submitting to the registered electors of the state of Colorado an amendment to the Colorado Constitution concerning creating an exception to the right to bail for cases of murder in the first degree when proof is evident or presumption is great. Senator Gardner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I move House Concurrent Resolution 241002. Is, is there any discussion on the resolution? Would you like to go ahead, Senator Gardner? Uh, thank you. Members, do uh, give me your attention. House Concurrent Resolution 1002 is very important. Um, you will recall, if you've been here uh, a few sessions, that the death penalty was abolished uh, in Colorado, uh, which had many implications, but one of them not considered at the time was that our Constitution makes all offenses bailable, that is, subject to bail, except for capital crimes where proof is evident or the presumption is great. Now, capital crimes are those crimes for which the death penalty can be imposed. The consequence of this was that, for the most part, first-degree murder charges, which were potentially death penalty cases, all of them, uh, very few ultimately ended up that way, all of them were non-bailable if the presumption was great or proof was evident. Um, when the death penalty was abolished, our, our courts, our trial courts, uh, continued to treat what had previously been capital crimes uh, as non-bailable on those circumstances. Um, I recognized at the time that it was only a matter of time before the Colorado Supreme Court said, well, that's a bit of a problem. And the problem was that we no longer have capital crimes in Colorado. There are no longer crimes for which the death penalty can be awarded, and that's the defi definition at common law of a capital crime. So when that occurred, trial courts recognized that all crimes charged, including first-degree murder, were subject to bail. Now, what you find uh, is that the courts um, set very, very high bail, uh, as much as $10 million in some cases, uh, kind of on a, on, on a standard that I must set bail, but it needs to be extraordinarily high. Uh, frankly, that's a bit of a, a fiction. I mean, we ought to treat bail uh, as security for appearance and uh, and nothing more. And so what HCR 1002 does is instead of saying in our Constitution as it does now that uh, every, every offense is subject to bail except for capital crimes where uh, proof is evident, presumption is great, we will replace that with first degree murder so that the most serious crime we have on the books, first degree murder, it becomes non-bailable. Uh, and it will take care of this problem. You already voted by consent on uh, House Bill 1225, which is the companion to this, uh, basically the implementation. HCR 1002 will, uh, if, if receiving a two-thirds vote, which we uh, have some confidence that it will, members, because you understand the gravity of this, uh, will place this issue on the ballot for uh, the voters to approve and to change our Constitution. Um, there, are, uh, there, there are really compelling reasons for doing this, and I want to share uh, a, a story with you in a moment, but I, I want to yield the floor to my co-prime sponsor for a moment to, to speak about the importance of the bill as well. Thank you, Senator Fields. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and my uh, co-prime sponsor from El Paso County has done a wonderful job outlining the merits of the bill and the reason for this um, measure that needs to go to the ballot. 
The reason it's important is because this is the fix. Because when we abolished the death penalty, that meant that everyone was a, eligible for bond no matter how heinous the crime would be. And the victim community were outraged. I got calls specifically from Douglas County where there was a situation where um, a dentist murdered his wife. And he was eligible for bond. I think it was like $5 million. And he was capable of producing the requirements to be eligible for that bond. But his neighbors and his friends were terrified that he would come back to that home and to that neighborhood and threaten and intimidate and harass and create a culture of fear in that culture set. So it wasn't just that one incident. Anyone who has been charged with that kind of capital offense would be eligible for bond. And that's what the Supreme Court of Colorado said. Basically, this is that fix that we're asking you to vote on. So there are going to be situations that you're just not going to be eligible for bond because you're wealthy. There's several cases since this has happened. I think the number is that nearly 500 first degree murder cases have been impacted since we abolished the death penalty, which made them eligible for bond, which means you could be pumping your gas or you could be at King Supers or wherever and the offender would be right there. This is the fix that we're asking you, for you to support because it provides the legislative fix that we need moving forward. So members, please vote yes on HCR 1002. Senator Gardner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members, um, this bill has uh, moved through and it, it's on special orders uh, because of its importance and there's uh, large support for it. Uh, the, the other evening in uh, Judiciary, we, uh, we moved it through fairly quickly. It had been a long day. Um, and I, I had a constituent from Colorado Springs th who wanted to tell her story uh, and, and because of the, the shifting schedule did not get an opportunity to do so. And I promised, because it is a compelling story, uh, that I would share it during second reading. Uh, it's the story of my constituent, Courtney Whitelaw, who is the mother of Riley Whitelaw. Uh, those of you uh, from El Paso County in southern Colorado will remember that uh, Riley Whitelaw was brutally murdered in June of 2022 um, by a co-worker uh, in a break room where she worked. Uh, the charge in that case was first degree murder um, after deliberation. Uh, Riley Whitelaw, a, a, a young woman work, at work that day, headed into her senior year at Air Academy High School and had just begun making plans for college. Um, the only child of her mom Courtney. When that case was presented to the court for charging, um, the proof is evident, presumption is great, and the defendant was held without bail. And Courtney felt like at least this defendant would be held uh, in El Paso County Jail pending trial. And then the, United, the uh, Colorado Supreme Court, uh, looking at the Constitution, said, no, we no longer have capital offenses. That was a correct legal holding, but a very tough and hard legal holding for folks like Courtney Whitelaw, who then had to go to a bond hearing as a victim, uh, as the mother of a murdered young woman had to go to a bond hearing and hear bond being set. On June 21st, after the Supreme Court made that ruling, um, she was notified by the prosecutor that she would now have to go be at that hearing, that there would be a bail hearing. And it was blindsiding to her. 
that to even think that this person who's charged with the murder of her daughter would have the opportunity for bail. It felt wrong to her to have to go back and address that in a matter where, uh, again, the proof is very great. We need to consider the impact uh, on witnesses, um, upon family and friends. As, as the senator from Aurora has said, the possibility that that murderer would be placed on bail, that you might encounter them in the community, just to know that they're out there. Um, we need to consider that impact. That is what this bill does. It is gratifying that the people of Colorado, I believe, are overwhelmingly in support of this uh, constitutional change that members of the General Assembly on a bipartisan basis, I believe, will pass this uh, nearly unanimously, if not unanimously, without a single no vote. Um, we need to do this for victims like Riley Whitelaw, for families of victims like Courtney Whitelaw. And so as, as you vote I today, I ask that you remember them, you remember the others, you remember the case that the senator from Aurora has called your attention to. These are, these are real cases, real stories, victims that live with this day in and day out, uh, and it never goes away. We need to ensure that first-degree murder is non-available, where proof is evident and presumption is great. Once again, thank you. Thank you. Further discussion, Senator Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I stand in, in support of um, this resolution. Um, my son's uh, killer uh, was charged with um, um, murder in the first degree on 12 different counts and murder, attempted murder in the second degree on 70 um, different counts. I sat through a three and a half month um, uh, death penalty trial and uh, saw him um, given um, life without the possibility of parole. I um, got myself elected here and um, sat for a number of days um, while they um, voted and the people within this building, um, not, not the people of the state of Colorado, the people within this building took away um, the ability uh, for families like mine who have this, this type of crime perpetrated against them in the future to get the justice that they want by um, having their killers um, run through a uh, death penalty uh, case that's no longer available to them. This, colleagues, is the least that we can do. This is by far the least we can do is to make sure that these killers do not have the ability to see the light of day until their trial has been completely adjudicated. Um, I appreciate the fact that this is then being turned over to allow the members and the voters of the state of Colorado to have their say on this. Because as I say, they did not get their say when it came to whether we are going to have the death penalty in this state or not. The people in this building took that away from them. And I will forever um, be saddened by that and will continue to work um, to see what we can do to make sure that people um, who are impacted get the justice that they deserve. So I ask for an I vote in this. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on House uh, Resolution 1002. Seeing none. The motion before the body is the adoption of HCR 24-1002. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. To the second bill, will the clerk please read House Bill 241248. House Bill 1248 by Representative 
Snyder and Soper and Senator Gardner concerning the Uniform Non-Testamentary Electronic Estate Planning Documents Act. Senator Gardner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move uh, House Bill 1248. Um, members, uh, this is the uh, Uniform Non-Testamentary uh, Electronic Estate Planning Documents Bill. A very exciting bill. Um, in all seriousness, uh, it modernizes the law of estate planning. Um, you know, almost everything you do in your life today, you can handle uh, leases, uh, mortgage and loan documents, and other business uh, documents electronically. And that's possible to do under the Electronic Wills Act as well now in Colorado. Um, this extends that to uh, other estate planning documents like advanced medical directives and things that you can do electronically and have them stored electronically. Uh, I think the best part of it is when you do them, you can have them stored electronically so that um, your family members don't have to go, well, which box did we put that in? Uh, is it in the bank vault? Where is it? So this is a good bill. I urge an I vote. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the bill is adopted. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. The motion is for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the motion is adopted. Committee will rise and report. Senate will come to order. Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. President. The co committee had one bill and resolution under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? March 27, 2024. Mr. President, your the committee of the whole begs leave to report it has had under consideration the following attached of bills, being the second reading thereof, and makes the following recommendations thereon. House Concurrent Resolution 1002, House Bill 1248, passed on second reading and ordered revised and placed on the calendar for third reading final passage. Senator Colker. I move the adoption of the report. The motion is adoption of the committee of the whole report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, and one excused, the committee to hold report is adopted. <laughs> HCR 241002 and House Bill 241248 passed in second reading in order revised and placed in the calendar for third reading and final passage. Consideration of House Amendments to Senate Bills. Would the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 35. Senate Bill 35 by Senators Pelton B. and Fields and Representatives Winter T. and Duran concerning strengthening the enforcement of human trafficking for servitude. Senator Pelton B. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we uh, that the Senate concur with the House Amendment to Senate Bill 024035. <laughs> Is there any discussion? 
Yes, uh, what we what happened was is that um, we put back uh, the house put back in the serious bodily injury uh, portion of the bill and also added two affirmative defenses um, uh, for victims uh, if they get if if they are victims of uh, human trafficking and traffic somebody. So that's what the house did. The motion is that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 35. Are there any no votes? No, he wants to discuss. Oh, discussion. Senator Roberts, didn't see your hand. Colleagues, I rise today in strong opposition to the motion to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 35. And I would like to take a moment to explain why and my extreme displeasure with what the House did to this bill. And it is out of great respect to the sponsors, the good Senator from Aurora, good Senator from Sterling, and the House sponsors, the good Majority Leader and the Assistant Minority Leader in the House. But frankly, they made concessions in the House Judiciary Committee that are bad public policy and render this bill a disservice to victims. And they use the victims' names in their advocacy for those changes, which I find to be offensive. This bill is about human trafficking. This is about protecting the most vulnerable people in our society, humans that get trafficked by other humans for sexual servitude or for labor. And I commend the sponsors in this chamber for their work on this bill and the improvements they made to it in the Senate Judiciary Committee. So what this bill proposes is two things, and let me just take care of one thing in, in the first. The first part is extending the statute of limitations for human trafficking crimes. That is a great idea. We absolutely should do that. That remains in the bill. We should do that for a variety of reasons. Colorado currently ranks in the bottom five states for uh, the statute of limitations for human trafficking. We must do better, and I appreciate that that's still in the bill. But what the other part of the bill proposes is to make human trafficking a crime of violence, which means it's subject to enhanced sentencing rates for those offenders. It means they actually have to serve substantive prison time rather than the current situation where human traffickers are spending about 35% of their sentence. It's an F3, the sentencing range is four to 12 years. Most of them spending 35% of their sentence. If they get a four year sentence, they're out in about a year. And we heard in testimony from district attorneys and victims that they come right back out of prison and start doing the human trafficking again. Prison is a deterrent to this crime. I understand there are philosophies about whether incarceration is a deterrent, and it might not be for some crimes. But for human trafficking, it absolutely is. And we have a situation in Colorado where people are spending less than 50%, sometimes 30% of their sentence after they commit these heinous actions on kids and on adults. So what this bill proposes is raise it to a crime of violence. That's a good idea. The problem is that a crime of violence in Colorado under our statute, in order to charge somebody with that, you have to prove one of two things. That the defendant used a deadly weapon in the commission of the crime, or that they caused serious bodily injury. That doesn't happen most of the time with human trafficking. And I know a lot of folks in this chamber and a lot of folks in the legislature rightly advocate for human trafficking victims. But if you actually know what human trafficking is, you know it is a crime of manipulation. It's a crime that occurs over several months or several years. Not a crime of physical violence, often never a crime where a deadly weapon is used. And so the problem with just calling it a crime of violence is that it's never going to get charged that way because DAs can't prove it that way because it's not how it works. And so the good senators, the sponsors of this bill in committee passed an amendment that made human trafficking a per se crime of violence, meaning you don't need to show serious bodily injury, physical injury, by the way, 
or that it was used, that a deadly weapon was used in the commission of the crime. And that was so important because human trafficking is not a crime of physical violence, it's a crime of mental violence, mental manipulation, psychological manipulation and control. We passed that amendment in the Senate Judiciary Committee, and then this bill moved very quickly on seconds and thirds. It passed this chamber 33 to 1. 33 to 1. And then this bill went to the House Judiciary Committee, where a small group of members on that committee worked with the criminal defense bar to strike that away. We heard two people opposed to this bill in the Senate Judiciary Committee. One of them was the person from the Office of the State Public Defender. Not elected by anybody as far as I know, but we heard that all 22 district attorneys elected by their constituents, hundreds of thousands of Coloradans, supported the bill as amended by the Senate. Democrats, Republicans, and then we heard from countless victims of human trafficking, manipulated by their abusers, forced to do heinous things over years in our state. Then the House Judiciary Committee gets rid of all of that. In the name of protecting victims, they say we can't have this because it will sweep victims into the criminal justice system. Now that comes along a lot, if you pay attention to the Senate Judiciary Committee or either commi Judiciary Committee in this body, you'll hear that a lot. We don't want to sweep victims into the criminal justice system. Okay, is there ever any evidence of that presented? No, there's not. I asked the district attorneys, do you charge victims with human trafficking? No. DAs have more discretion than that. And there are certainly bad examples of DAs overcharging, but there is no evidence of DAs charging victims of human trafficking with human trafficking. It's a hypothetical argument at best. It is not happening. We had this discussion last year on distribution of drugs resulting in death, and we heard about, oh, you know, victims are gonna get charged, people who have addiction are gonna get charged. But was there ever any evidence of that? No, in fact, there were only four cases, I recall, and all of those were those high-dealing drug dealers who have criminal rings in our state. That is not a valid argument, in my opinion, against this bill. We do not sweep victims of human trafficking into the criminal justice system. This is about going against the traffickers who manipulate people, manipulate women, young people, often an almost majority people of color are the victims. But the House Judiciary Committee wants to protect victims, so they got rid of all of that in the Senate version. And now they're asking for us to concur with their amendments. I find that to be objectionable if you actually want to serve victims and crack down on human trafficking in this state, I ask that we, um, and Mr. Ch uh, President, I move a substitute motion to reject the House amendments to this bill. We should go to a conference committee. We can keep the statute of limitations. We can keep the affirmative defense that the House wisely put into the bill, but we cannot say that this is simply a crime of violence because that is not how human trafficking works. Um, so I urge you to vote aye on my substitute motion to reject the House amendments and ask for a conference committee. Senator Fields. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask for a senatorial five. Senatorial five has been granted.
Senate will come back to order. We are discussing the motion that the Senate not concur with the House amendments to Senate Bill 35 and that a conference committee be appointed. Is there any discussion? Senator Fields. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank the good Senator from um, Frisco for his passionate remarks as it relates to those who are trapped in the cycle of human trafficking. The discussion that we had in committee was very compelling as it related to the DAs and the victims. That's why we passed the bill out of uh, the Senate judiciary with the amendments that have now been striken um, by the House. So I would like to concur with the Senate, um, with the recommendation from the good Senator from Frisco that we do go to a conference committee to continue the dialogue because the, the voice of the victim is very, very important. This bill is very, very important. You don't have to look far to see evidence of human trafficking. You can step outside of this Capitol and you can see people being trafficked from the RTD uh, bus stop or from a, um, a light rail. But this is a very serious crime. And for us to remove that, to diminish it and lower it, when we heard from victims how hard it is when you're trapped into this situation, deserves our attention. Hundreds of people are trapped into this scenario. We heard from DAs and we heard from victims. They're asking for this, but yet it comes back to us saying no. And when you look at the balance of who's saying no and who's saying yes to this, very little. Maybe two people that showed up in, in uh, at least the, the Senate um, Judiciary Commen uh, Committee. What's good about this and the reason we want to move forward is the statute of limitation, which the Senator mentioned that that's already intact from three years to 20. And if you know anyone that has been sexually assaulted or who deals with the situation, it takes them a minute to report what has happened. And a lot of times our criminal justice system and those around are shamed and blamed for why did you get tricked into doing this? We're trying to strengthen laws. We heard from a victim that her, once her person, her, her, whatever you want to call it, pimple, well, whoever he was, he went to jail, he came back out, and he was doing the same thing because the laws are not strong enough to protect victims. So I am in total agreement that we move forward and concur, establish a conference committee so that we can further the discussion to elevate and advance the voices of victims who are trapped in this scenario. Senator Pelton B. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to be clear. I would you know, I worked with the House sponsors to, to see if we could get this through judiciary, through the House, and um, they did an excellent job working with me to try to figure out how a path forward. And um, I don't want this bill to die, because there is some really good things in here, and we need to go and have those discussions again. So um, I just want to say, Thank you to my sponsor, um, the good Senator from Aurora, and I'd really appreciate her working so hard on this. And um, I ask that we support um, the substitute motion. Thank you. Senator Gonzalez. I rise. 
with the question. The good senator from Frisco referred to the 33 to 1 vote. That was me. My critique of the policy was driven solely by the addition of the crime of violence per se amendment that was added on in committee. This went from being a consensus policy to one that split the victim's community. My question is for the bill sponsors, if this is so important, why wasn't the original motion to go to conference in the first place? Senator Fields. Senator Fields. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. The reason is, hearing my good senator explain why we should go to conference committee convinced me to change my position. So for me, it's easy to be or not to be. We sit in committee all day, sometimes all night, and we hear arguments. And sometimes those arguments are compelling. When we hear testimony, and then we look through the bill, and we, make, we change our minds. I have a right and a responsibility to change my mind. Yes, I concur with the House position, but I'm claiming before you right now, I've changed my mind. I changed my mind. I have a right to. I have a right to. We all have a right to. Sometimes you think things over. The rationale has compelled me to change my mind. So that's why I changed my mind. And I think you're, if you're ever in a situation where you said yes, and then you change your mind to no, or vice versa, you have the right to do so. It's my prerogative. I want to continue the dialogue. I know, I know the consequences. The consequences is going to be either the bill fails and we lose the statute of limitations, which is very important to me, or we modify it. But there needs to be continued dialogue because what the House did they did it without our continued dialogue and discussion. I would like to have an opportunity to do so. So members, please join me and vote to um, go to a conference committee. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion is that the Senate not concur with the House amendments to Senate Bill 35 and that a conference committee be appointed. Are there any no votes? Put that hand down. With the vote of 34 ayes, 0 noes, 0 absent, and 1 excused, the motion is adopted. <laughs> Will the clerk please read a title to Senate Bill 138. Senate Bill 138 by Senator Simpson and Representatives Martinez and Catlin concerning the modification of the salary categorization of locally elected officers in specified counties. Senator Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate concur with House Amendments to Senate Bill 138. Is there any discussion, Senator Simpson? Um, yeah, Mr. President, the bill left here changing the classifications on three counties, um, and in the House they added one more county, Fremont County. Seeing no further discussion, the motions that the Senate concur with the House Amendments to Senate Bill 138. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> With a vote of 
33 ayes, one no, zero absent, and one excuse. The motion is adopted. Senator Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 24138. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. The motion is a repassage of Senate Bill 138. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, and one excuse, Senate Bill 138 is repassed. Co sponsors Senator Priola and Exum. Introduction of resolutions. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Introduction of resolutions. Senate Resolution 4 by Senators Carter and Fields concerning the effort to acknowledge and enshrine in the Constitution the rights of women in the United States. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that S Senate Resolution 004 lay over until Thursday, March 28, 2024. The motion is to lay over Senate Resolution 004 to Thursday, March 28, 2024. All those in favor say aye. aye. Polls no. The ayes have it. SR 004 will lay over until Thursday, March 28, 2024. Announcements. Senator Gardner. Thank you, Mr. President. Request a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Uh, thank you. Members, listen up. I think this could uh, really streamline our uh, work here. Uh, today, we had a special orders calendar that will come to be known as the Bob Gardner Special Orders Calendar. Um, and I, I regret that I don't have the majority leader's attention about this. Um, if every bill of which Bob Gardner, the senator from El Paso County, uh, is a sponsor will be placed on special orders, um, the, the things would move along much more quickly as they have today. So, um, for your consideration. Any further announcements? Members, Senate State Veteran Military Affairs Committee will be meeting up on adjournment to hear, hear, to hear Senate Bill 170 in the old Supreme Court. Any additional announcements? Okay. Senator Hansen. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Wanted to make a quick announcement about uh, breakfast and coffee this tomorrow morning, hosted by our good friends from Enterprise Mobility, to come and hear more about the importance of rental cars in our tourism economy invite you to join from 7.30 to 9 tomorrow morning just outside the old Supreme Court chambers. Yeah. Senator Liston. And um, I concur, Mr. President, with that, uh, with that announcement. Hope you'll join uh, the good Senator from Denver and I tomorrow morning. And with that... Senator Liston. Mm, uh, I have one more announcement, uh, members. So today, anybody guess what today is? Nuclear. It's Nuclear Caucus Day. That is correct. It's Nuclear Caucus Day. I want to remind everybody today uh, at 12 o'clock, uh, uh, we have a great speaker, Mr. Kirk Sorensen from Flybe Energy in room 603. Uh, come and learn about the latest technologies in nuclear energy. It will be informative. You will get extra credit if you come. I guarantee you will learn something. Today in room 603, in the State Services Building, you're all invited, especially you and you and you and you and you. You're all invited. What about me? Especially you and especially you. What about me, Senator? Love to have you. Senator Liston. You. Senator Liston, what about me? Am I invited? Yeah. You were pointing everybody out. I just want to make sure that we're okay. Senator Winter. Thank you, members. Transportation and Energy is going to meet today at 1.30, and I look forward to seeing you there. We have one bill. Senator Gonzalez. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Colleagues, the Senate Judiciary Committee will be meeting today at 1.30 in the Old Supreme Court. We will be hearing Senate Bill 131, 1130, 136, and 1071 in that order. See you all then. We will be beginning promptly. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee, we're meeting upon adjournment. We'll call it 11 o'clock sharp. Uh, uh, upstairs, we have two bills on our agenda, Senate Bill 38 and House Bill 1309, 11 a.m. Thanks. Senator Buckner. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate Education Committee, and please listen carefully, Senate Education Committee will be starting at 1.45 today in room 357. We're going to hear House Bill 1003, one, uh, Senate Bill 188, House Bill 1087, and we'll be hearing Senate Bill 164, School Finance, first. But we're going to start at 145. Thank you. Senator, Senator Fields. Thank you. Uh, members of the uh, Senate, um, Health and Human Services Committee. We are laying over House Bill 1171, and we're meeting upon adjournment, which will mean we will only have two bills, House Bill 1046 and House Bill 1037. And we are going to be meeting at um, 1045 in 15 minutes. Senator Buckner. Thank you. I need to make a correction. <laughs> Senate Education Committee will be meeting at 145. We're going to be hearing uh, Senate Bill 188, which is school finance. We're hearing that first. Then we're also hearing Senate Bill 164 and House Bill 1087 and House Bill 1003. Thank you, sorry for the confusion. Thank God for an amazing majority whip to pay attention to. Sometimes we make mistakes. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, a reminder is tomorrow is the final day to place your General Assembly merchandise order. Orders placed after the deadline may not receive the discounted pricing. If you have any questions about ordering, please see Tammy. Uh, Mr. President, I move the Senate Adjourn until 9 a.m. Thursday, March 28, 2024. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Senate will adjourn until 9 a.m. Thursday, March 28th.